Yeah, I might do a quick video today where I try and keep everything in the same video. So when the CPI came out, it was, in my opinion, hotter than expected. So inflation was higher than expected, but I don't think the market really translated that as, as I thought it would, which would have meant, you know, yields go higher, dollar goes much higher, uh, markets crash. It was kind of mixed. It was sort of sideways. So let's take a look real quick. S&P, you know, Again, it didn't do what I thought. It didn't squeeze high or go lower. It's kind of low movement day. I mean, it didn't really go high or low. So just sideways, you know, no comment. It was a bit of a nothing burger for the S&P at least. So I'm still of the opinion we're going to go lower. But for the S&P, no change in in my analysis. So you can't really call much from this daily candle. Now it's that exact same thing, okay? I'm not going to say that's really bullish, it's not as bearish as it was the day before. I still think we go lower. And the reason I'm skipping through the S&P and the NASDAQ is because I think the action is going to take place in the Dow and the Russell, especially the Russell. The Dow is bearish, even though it's down only 0.2% on the day. I think that's pretty bearish. These three, like the ascending chart is the weakest one. Just like how I like to play the descending breakout, the ascending breakdown is for me the most likely uh, outcome of such a such a pattern so i think you know one or two more days down and we close here just like i've already uh, drawn yesterday i haven't actually taken away these these drawings but i think we're just going to go bounce towards the ascending today i do actually think it might happen today and then on friday i mean i don't have to time it you know but i do think we're going to close below the ascending and below this little 34,250, and then we start to move lower and, and do what I've said here, which is maybe test this, bounce from there, and then go lower. Now, the Russell is what I really want to cover for the markets. Look at this. You know, down, okay, 0.6%, uh, nothing special, although that's a pretty bearish candle. Bearish engulfing, if I can say so. I mean, it clearly closes below the ascending. So even if I got it wrong by a few millimeters, it's below closes below all these lows pretty much bounced to 182 now today for me i'm going to be watching the russell and the russell and the banks i'll get to the banks in a second so i think we're just going to go lower and if we start closing below 182 and who knows we could start to visit the 180 for me the russell clearly looks like the weakest out of all of them clearly is going to lead all the others down that's maybe that's not as clear but in my opinion that will happen and i think it'll be the banks that do it so the russell watch the russell it's all about the russell for me and again the russell is more of an indication of the real economy you know it's all the small and medium businesses unlike these huge giant cyber businesses that you know they, they don't manufacture anything real tangible it's just cyber digits and paper and you know so the russell is pretty important when it comes to that just like the dow is the real industrial economy anyway that's a side note but the russell is very very weak let's look at the banks okay xlf it, it was looking stronger than everything else but look you know clearly a bit of a well it wasn't really it was actually unchanged but there's resistance up there and i think if the russell and everything goes lower it will clearly follow now the xlf will follow the small and regional banks Let's go straight to the KB and the KRE, which are pretty much identical. Look at this, close back below the ascending. Remember what the Russell's doing. If the Russell starts to go lower in one day, like today, we could start testing this 3750 zone. If we close below 3750, especially 37, that's it. We're going all the way down here, in my opinion. KRE, even weaker. Today could be the day where we close below this little level here. Like I said before, 4250 close below that, and we're going there. And once we're there, we're one level below the absolute lows of the bear market. You know, and then we're going down to COVID lows, which I think we can easily take out because I think the banks are in a way worse position now than the COVID times. COVID times was just a, a mass hysteria. Everyone sold everything. So I watch, I'm watching really KPE, KRE, Russell, as I used to. I think the banking crisis could be back on. The market may be trying to tell us something with yields all the way up. Um, so yeah, watch that. Let's go straight to yields. Yields, by the way, okay, the one year is higher highs, not higher highs, just higher lows, so just slowly curling higher. But let's get straight to the real ones. The two year, that's, you know, I thought we would break out and go higher, but I misinterpreted the market's reaction to the CPI. I thought, okay, I thought it'd be hot, hotter than, than expected. It was, but who cares about what the actual data is? It's about what the how the market reacts, right? That's where you actually make money. 
this looks like a little reversal. I mean, look, we tagged resistance perfectly, by the way, so that's nice. But we close at low of day and it looks like we want to go back down a bit. I don't think it's going to be a very strong move down. I don't think, I think the market thought that it didn't warrant higher rates, maybe, even though it was hotter than expected. Who cares? But it looks like yields may want to go down a little bit before trying again. But, you know, the more you try, the more likely you are to break out. But um, you've got to, yeah, I don't know. I'm just thinking maybe we're going to go lower here. And I'm going to watch also this ascending support I've just put in place. So I've got to be cognizant that maybe it's the high in yields. Maybe people are going to start buying bonds also if the market crashes, right? Because on one side, I'm saying yields should break out. But on the other side, I think that yields are high enough to take down the markets. And if the markets get taken down like they did last time, people will panic by bonds. So maybe bonds have hit their high because they're high enough to take down the banks. Five years, same thing. Close at low of day, looks like it wants to go lower. Ten years, same thing. Tags, resistance. I didn't put resistance here, but obviously the last high of the bear market is resistance. Where are we going to go now? I don't know. I didn't even put in the ascending just put that in for now but you know we've got our same sort of patterns in all of them 30 years same thing didn't even tag the high so i don't know i'm not really paying too much attention now that's a nice trend line so yeah yields maybe want to come down a bit so let's look at the dollar does that want to do the same thing are yields and the dollar moving the same way well the dollar was green yesterday it did come down because of this japanese yen kerfuffle but, you know, so far this morning, and I hate making videos in the morning. What well, I do, I like it. But, you know, if yields come down, the dollar could come down too. We've got this support zone. And if we start to take out this ascending, then down we go even more. So the dollar, I was of the opinion that we'd go higher, keep going up. But just because of the yields, what's happening in the yields, maybe the dollar follows, follows yields a bit lower. And if we do... When do we get to support? Are we going to hit this ascending support? Is that going to be support? Bouncing around 104. 104 should be the level. It depends. If yields bounce, when they come, uh, and the, if the dollar bounces with yields, it could be around 104. But, you know, if we start closing below the ascending, maybe we go lower. I don't know. Something to watch. I didn't really consider watching the dollar break down so soon after CPI. But, um, it wasn't the biggest move either. So anyway, I'm just watching, you know, resistance on the move up. Support on the way down is ascending. And I'll look at the next levels after, although I've already identified them. So it's pretty interesting stuff. Let's look at commodities. Copper, you know, it wasn't the biggest day yesterday for copper, but so far today we're moving up a little bit. And again, that's because of the dollar. So again, with the markets maybe going down, that can also silence copper a little bit. So I don't expect copper to do too much and it's still going to be stuck between this range. I'm giving copper a bigger range because it's just so hard to call. It's very choppy and it's it's so influenced by the markets and the dollar, which can go in opposite directions that I just have to give it more space. So I'm just going to say sideways, bias to the upside, very light bias to the upside in the short term, just because the dollar, but again, the markets are weak. So natural gas, remains strong didn't do it yesterday just playing with us again but it's today the day again not influenced by the markets the dollar yields doesn't care about all that and that's nice and refreshing but i'm looking for a close above 2.9 the technicals work perfectly by the way so i'm going to leave everything in place a close above 2.9 would send us all the way up to 3 305 and a close above 305 would send us all the way to four in my opinion so we're very close to a squeeze <laughs> right very close to a massive squeeze so very bullish very happy and today could be a very important day so we'll look at that later oil keeps marching up just keeps going up does it want to get to 92 before it's racing or maybe even 94 just pop out and then go back down I don't know, but it looks like it could hit 90 today. Actually, it almost did yesterday already. So if the dollar goes down, it could go up, and it doesn't care too much about the markets. So, yeah, can't say I'm bearish. Those are not bearish patterns. You have a little bit of a doji there, but that doesn't mean it's bearish, doesn't mean it's bullish. So oil, I'm going to stay lightly bullish short term. So moving on to 90. It's very nice, though. It's really nice calling this the whole way. Uranium, on. Looking believable. 3% move. Uranium doesn't care. 
yesterday didn't care about the markets. That's one of the strongest moves it's had in a while. And that's on a CPI day where it was choppy. So it's just uranium doing its own thing, purely based on, I, in my opinion, technical breakout. The fundamental picture, the macro picture is just perfect. Uranium is the number one source of energy in the future. So it's going to be better later. But look at this, zoom out, remember what we're doing within this wedge, broke out, retested and kept going. And now we're going to go all the way up. And it hurts me to cover it because I don't own it, but I have to respect the moves and the people who own it because they are right. Mm -hmm. Just like the people who own gold and silver are right. But uranium people have had their day early. And uh, in my opinion, you could trim a little bit of uranium and go into gold and silver, but I can understand why you wouldn't want to do that also. But uranium, amazing candle, no resistance until I said this before, you know, I said this, since you take this out, there's basically no resistance until 28. It doesn't mean you get there in one go, but, you know, a day like today makes sense. All right, gold and silver. Now, uh, yesterday we tested basically the 1900 level, just above 1905. So that's nice. Today, we're just sideways again. I don't think we're going to make any crazy moves until the dollar breaks down or maybe the market or yields move in a crazy direction. Uh, it would be good if gold curls now. I, I could do with that. Um, but soon we will have a, a decision because the dollar, the DXY, soon has to make a decision either to continue its breakout or to lose its ascending steep line of support and then just retrace a bit and then we'll see. So if that happens, which I think it might happen, actually, we could see gold back go back up. Let's just see how strong gold is versus the dollar. You know, some days it goes, goes up a little bit, but if the DXY just comes down a little bit and gold goes up a lot, that suggests it's relatively strong and may want to continue. So I'd like to see how strong gold gets if the DXY does continue to move down. Otherwise, it's the same levels I've been looking at if we flush 1900 down to 1885. Uh, but soon a decision has to come, you know, it's it's really stuck between this descending and these horizontals, especially this one, 1885. So if it just ends up going sideways, at one point, you'll either have to break down from 1885 or break out of this descending. I favor the break out of the descending, actually, because it's my favorite chart pattern. But we just need more time to see what the chart tells us. It's still very, very unsure. This would really be a guess now to where which way it goes. That's why I like to leave the levels in place. Silver, yeah. It's, um, I just lost silver there. Let me bring it back, because actually trading view is not getting that easy with this. Okay, so silver, moving down to this level here, it's, um, it's very weak, you know, it's very, very weak. And that's, that's not what I expected without a massive move down in gold. So it's... You know, will it get down to this level? If we do, it should be very, very strong support. We should have strong buying, but a little disappointed. You know, even today, I was expecting still to be up a little bit, at least with um with the XY being down. But I'm just gonna have to give it a bit more time. We've got the levels. We know that silver should be very, very strong down here. So I'm just waiting to see if it gets down here. Is there strong buying? There should be, and let's also see what happens to the XY. You know, just give it a few more days and it'll be much clearer. But today should be very interesting. GDX, by the way, that was okay. GDX and GDXJ, even though they were down 0 0.25, 0 0.5%, some of the particular miners were, were quite decent. Newmont, for example, Barrick, they looked quite nice today. Um, so some of them look like they've got strong candles in place, looking for an excuse to move higher. Maybe they can change the actual GDX themselves, you know, especially something like Newmont and Barrick. But basically a sideways day, you know, for both of them. It wasn't bullish, wasn't bearish, just sideways. We're looking for more action elsewhere. The dollar, the yield, even the markets to some extent, uh, and obviously gold and silver. So it's just no action today. It's a bit of a anti-climax. So let's see what happens. Do I end with Bitcoin? No, Bitcoin also the same thing, just resistance. And by the way, I did say watch close below 25,000. And even though it moved down below 25,000, didn't close below it. Some people say 24,800, it's the same sort of thing. So um, always remember how important the close is, not the actual intraday move. Well, intraday move is very important too. Depends how you're trading, but the close is the most important. All right, I'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.